All right, so in this video, I want to teach you guys all the car terms that you need to understand before you walk into the car dealership to buy your next car. It's very important for everyone to have this knowledge to understand what each of these terms mean before they walk into the car dealership because that will equip you with the knowledge that you need to make a great deal when it comes to buying a car, whether you want to pay in cash, whether you want to lease, or whether you want to finance. So with that said, let's jump right into it. I'm going to first touch on the terms that apply to pretty much everyone and then I'm going to um, cover the terms that specifically apply to car leasing. First up we have the Monroney sticker. This is the window sticker that you're going to find on the window of every new car. It's going to list the car model and all the options that have been added to it and it's going to at the bottom it's going to list the MSRP which is the next term. MSRP stands for Manufacturer Suggested Retail Price your goal when you're buying a car should be to pay under this amount so you're going to look at the monroney sticker you're going to spot the msrp at the bottom whatever that msrp is your goal is to pay less than that amount now this was pretty much the norm before covid like if you walked into the car dealership and you got a car for five thousand dollars less than msrp that was the norm that was common after covid with the supply and demand issues and some dealerships being very greedy paying over msrp became the norm and paying at msrp became a really good deal now the car market is transitioning back to its old ways of paying less than msrp but in today's market you should still shoot for paying under msrp but if you do end up paying msrp itself it's still okay you should never ever pay over msrp unless we're talking about a car that is in really high demand really low supply or exotic cars or something like that okay so keep that in mind monroney sticker window sticker it's going to have the msrp on it your goal should be to pay under msrp next we have the apr this is pretty much your interest rate almost everyone knows what it means annual percentage rate it's the finance rate it's the effective interest rate so next we have the buy rate and the sell rate very important for you guys to understand the buy rate and the sell rate and the difference between the two the buy rate is basically the interest rate that the dealership will acquire financing at okay what does that mean when you walk into the car dealership and you apply for a car loan the dealership most times is going to send out your credit profile to multiple different lenders and get multiple different rates the rates that the banks are giving the dealership are called the buy rate the dealership can then take that rate and add up to two percentage points to it legally and present you that new rate the new rate is called the sell rate okay so that is that is one of the reasons why it's important for you guys to get a pre-approval from a bank before you walk into the car dealership because you may look at your credit score and be like okay i have a 740 i should qualify for you know in today's market maybe six percent interest rate five percent interest rate on a new car then you walk into or a used car then you walk into the car dealership and they present you nine percent even though the bank gave them seven percent but they're presenting you nine percent so that is when it becomes important to ask them what's my buy rate and they should tell you invoice um, invoice slash dealer invoice is basically the price that the dealer paid for the car now you know in today's world with the technology and everything it's not super hard to find out how much the dealership has paid for the car now a lot of dealerships are probably not going to be willing to sell you a car for what they paid for it which is okay they're a business they need to make money but it's still important for you guys to understand how much the dealership paid for the car but if you don't know the exact figure for the dealer invoice it's not that big of a deal either just know what it means next we have the doc fee documentation fee this is pretty much a fee that you're going to have to pay for the dealership to process all the paperwork that you're filing and store them safely this is actually a pretty important fee just make sure it's not anything exorbitant like four or five hundred dollars okay usually should be around a hundred dollars maybe 150 most times even 75 um, is going to be the documentation fee as long as it's nothing crazy you have nothing to worry about next we have gap insurance now gap insurance basically will cover the difference between how much the car is worth and how much you owe on it okay now whether or not you should buy gap insurance is going to depend on your circumstances if you're buying a car that is notorious for going down in value very rapidly over time and you're not putting a down payment it's going to be pretty important for you to have gap insurance now are you going to buy gap insurance directly from the dealership probably not because in a lot of cases they are highly highly um, overpriced at the dealership you should do your own math okay so gap insurance is it's basically going to cover the gap between how much you owe on your car and how much the car 
is worth. Next, we have prepayment penalties. These are pretty much extinct in today's world. Um, basically, what this means is if you take out a four-year loan and you want to pay it off in year two, you're going to have to pay an X amount extra because the bank is not going to get the full benefit of the interest that you would have paid over the four-year period. But like I said, if you have a decent enough credit score, prepayment penalties should not be a thing for you. Just make sure you ask the dealership, you read the fine print. You don't want to take out a car loan that has any sort of prepayment penalties unless you have really bad credit and you're doing like in-house financing, stuff like that, which you shouldn't be doing. But if you have really bad credit, you're pretty much out of, out of options. If you have a decent enough credit score, prepayment penalties should not apply to you. Next, we have uh, rebates, basically a discount, pretty straightforward. If you see uh, manufacturer rebates, some, something like that, or dealer rebates, it's basically a discount uh, on the car. A $2,000 rebate is a $2,000 discount. Trade-in value. This is how much the dealership is going to pay for the car that you are trading in. All right. Now, something important I want to mention here. 90 plus percent of the time now again today's car world is very different than a few years ago but even in today's world a lot of times almost all the time the dealership is going to pay less for your car than a third party okay so if you want to get maximum value out of your car you should sell it yourself on you know facebook marketplace craigslist whatever it may be rather than trading it in to a dealership because the dealership is going to pay you much less, sometimes much less, sometimes a little bit less than the third party would pay you. Now, in some scenarios, if you're trading in an expensive car, 30, 40, 50,000 dollar car, it's going to be hard to find another individual who just has $40,000 laying around that they can pay you and buy your car. So in some scenarios, you're going to have to trade in your car, but if you have the option to sell it to a third party, you're going to get the maximum value for your car that way. But trade in value does offer the convenience of just driving up to the dealership, giving them your car and driving off the lot in your new car. Next, we have upside down. This is a bad scenario. You don't want to be here. Upside down is basically where you owe more on the car than what it is worth, okay? So if you buy a brand new car, right, for let's say $50,000, right? You drive it off the lot, you've been driving it for six months, it goes down in value like a rock, you know, maybe it went down $7,000 in six months, and now it's worth forty three, dollars but you've only made, you know, six payments of, however, you know, let's say you paid off $3,000 and it went down $6,000 in value. So now it's worth $43,000, but you owe $46,000, you're $3,000 upside down. Okay. Now the example I gave you wasn't even really the worst one. There's a lot of scenarios where people walk into the dealership and they're $10,000 upside down. Usually what happens is the last loan that you had, you paid over MSRP. Cars already go down in value super quickly. If you pay over MSRP, you're going to lose a ton of money. Okay. If you pay $10,000 over MSRP, the moment you drive off the lot, not only have you lost the $10,000 over MSRP, you've also lost a few thousand dollars on the original value of the car. And those are the scenarios where you're going to see yourself being 10, 15, $20,000 upside down. Okay. You don't want to be here. Okay. Next up, we have destination charges. This is basically how much um, it costs for the manufacturer to ship the car from the factory to the dealership. Another important note I want to mention about destination charges is they are only a thing on new cars. You cannot, you should not pay destination charges on used cars unless you're having the used car transported to you from a different city or a different state. Okay. But destination charges, valid charge on new cars, not on used cars. Extended warranties, uh, basically it just takes the manufacturer's uh, warranty and extends it beyond the manufacturer warranty. So if you buy a car that has you know, four years, 50,000 miles, bumper to bumper warranty, and you wanna extend that to eight years, you're gonna have to pay X amount extra. Be careful with these because for some cars, if you do plan to keep it for the long term, they are worth it, especially cars who are gonna break down often and cost a fortune to repair. But again, just like gap insurance, you may want to shop around, okay? Because in the finance office of the dealership, they are going to be heavily, heavily overpriced. Even if you do decide to buy them at the dealership, it's very important for you to negotiate with the finance officer to be able to get the best rate for extended warranties. Sometimes they're worth it. All right, so with all of that out of the way, I'm going to move to some terms that are specific to car leasing. 
Now, I love car leasing. Um, let us know in the comment section if you lease cars, if you finance cars, if you pay cash. Maybe you're a fan of Dave Ramsey and you want to go off on people who lease cars. That is absolutely okay. I love leasing cars. I always lease brand new cars. That said, it's very important for you guys to understand the terms that go into leasing. Okay. With that said, let's start off. Acquisition fee. This is pretty much a fee that is going to be charged to you for initiating a lease. It's going to be different um, from different manufacturers. Sometimes it's going to be six ninety five. Sometimes it's going to be eight ninety five. Generally, it's going to be non negotiable. Valid charge. It's just how much it costs you to initiate a lease with that company. Next, we have the buyout price slash the residual value. Okay. Slight difference between the two. If you complete the term of your lease, at that point, your buyout price and your residual value are going to be the same. However, if you have a three-year lease and you want to pay it off, let's say in a year and a half, then your buyout price and your residual value are going to be two different things. The residual value is set by the lender when you are signing the lease. And that basically what the residual value is, is it's the value of the car at the end of the car lease. Okay, based on the mileage that you have agreed to and based on standard wear and tear. The buyout price is the residual value plus however much you still have to pay because you didn't complete the term of your lease. Okay, so if you have a three year lease and you want to, you know, pay up, buy, buy out the car at the point of year and a half, if your residual value is X, your buyout price at that year and a half mark, it's going to be X plus Y. You can call out, you can call the lender and figure out what that Y is. But if you complete the term of your lease at that point, your buyout price and your residual value are going to be the same. Next, we have the capitalized cost. This is basically the entire amount that is being leased. Okay. Capitalized cost minus capitalized cost reduction, which is, you know, any discounts, trade in value, um, down payments that you have made is is going to give you what's called the adjusted capitalized cost okay capitalized cost total amount being leased capitalized cost reduction down payments trade in value capitalized cost minus capitalized cost reduction adjusted capitalized cost next we have the disposition fee this is a fee, this is another pretty much non-negotiable fee that you're going to have to pay at the end of the car lease if you decide to give the car back to the dealer. This one is also going to be different from brand to brand. Some brands may charge you, I don't know, $500, $1,000. Some may charge you a bit less. Valid charge is just what, what it costs the dealership to prep the car again for the next customer. Um, excess wear and tear slash mileage charges. So when you sign a lease contract, you are agreeing to standard wear and tear in most times and some mileage charges. It may be, you know, uh, 10K, it may be 12K. Sometimes you can get uh, uh, seven and a half thousand and uh, sometimes you can get 15,000. You're agreeing to some amount of mileage allowance. If you go over that, you're going to have to pay some amount per mile. Again, this is going to be different brand by brand. If you're leasing a pretty normal car, it's probably going to be 15, 20 cents per mile over your mileage allowance. If you're leasing a more luxury car, it's probably going to be 30, 35, 40 cents. Very important for you to understand. And then excess wear and tear, like I said, there's some standard wear and tear. It's going to be different from company to company. Sometimes you can get a scratch on the car, but if it's in terms of diameter or in terms of size, if it's less than a quarter, the manufacturer is going to oversee that. It's going to be dependent on the specific lease contract that you agreed to. Next, we have money factor. Very important for you guys to understand. Money factor is basically an APR expressed as a decimal and it only applies in car leasing. Okay. Whatever your money factor is, like I said, it's going to be expressed as a decimal, like 0.000. .000 zero x something you take this number and you multiply it by 2400 and you will get your effective ap apr when it comes to your car lease that concludes the video um, if i missed anything please write it in the comment section down below um, if you have any other thoughts please share them in the comment section down below and thanks for watching